All right, Shalom, Yasha'Allah. Before I begin this lesson, I want to give all honor, praise, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Raka, Quidash, for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. And this lesson, I'm going to speak on the fact that the so called white man is going into extinction according to the Holy Bible. Now, this is one of those tough pills to swallow if you are, in fact, an Edomite. Okay? But this is the truth of the Holy Bible. And because the understanding was given unto me, it is therefore my duty to deliver this message. You know, because this is a part of prophecy. And you know, this is the testimony of Yahweh Shai. You know, because the testimony of Yahweh Shai, who the world calls Jesus, is the spirit of prophecy. So... I also want to say double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, where I learned this truth from. Those are the real prophets of these end times. Those are the ones that taught me everything that I know in the Holy Bible through the Holy Spirit. Okay, so double honors to them. Uh, Shalom to you, Akwaf, in order, meaning you Israelite sisters that are being submissive and in order and doing everything you're supposed to be doing. As a virtuous woman that the Lord is supposed to be doing in these end times, you know, and Lord willing, you get delivered in the times that we're coming into when the system collapses. And Shalom to you, Israelites scattered abroad, meaning you Israelites that may look like these other nations, meaning you might look like a so called white man, you might look like a so called Chinese man, or whatever other nation is out there, okay? But if your seed line goes back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, you are indeed a Hebrew Israelite and salvation is for you. Okay, because this thing ain't about color, it's about a chosen seed line. And the Hebrew Israelites were scattered among all nations. So therefore, in these end times, through generation after generation of seed mixing, Hebrew Israelites can look like any nation, okay? Therefore, we don't teach that this is necessarily about color. So when I say in this lesson that the so-called white man is going into slavery and then extinction, this doesn't mean all so-called white people, okay? This just means those whose lineage goes back to Esau. There's no salvation for Esau. And the thing is, Christianity doesn't teach the true understanding of what salvation is. So therefore, when we say that salvation is only for Israel, they can't receive it because they don't have the true understanding of the Holy Scriptures. All right, so that's enough rambling. Let's get into this lesson because, you know, this is probably going to ruffle a few feathers, which I really don't care. The truth of the Bible has to be taught. Whether it's offensive or not, you know, somebody's got to speak the truth. And because the understanding was given unto me, therefore it is my duty to teach the truth, no matter how offensive it may seem. Because there's great punishment for me if I don't teach what the Lord has given me, okay? So I'm going to show you without a doubt... That the Holy Bible says that the so-called white man is going into extinction. You know, their nation deserves extinction. It's the only way that peace will ever come to this earth. And I'm going to prove all these things with scripture. It's undeniable. You can't get around it. So, you know, if you don't want to know the truth, I suggest you switch off this video right now. Because you're probably going to lose sleep at night after watching this. So I'm going to start right here with this scripture in the book of Ezekiel chapter 35. And I'm going to start at verse 5. It says, because thou hast had a perpetual hatred. And perpetual means never ending, everlasting. Okay. There's deep rooted hatred between the so-called white man and the so-called black man. But the people that rule over us right now is the so-called white man. Which is the nation of Edom. And if you go back into the book of Genesis, chapter 25, then you'll understand that Edom, which is the so-called white man, is Jacob's brother. You know, they were twins. And they never got on since the womb. They were fighting in Rebecca's womb. Okay. 
There's always been enmity between us, and there always will be. But the aggressor is the so-called white man. He's the one that rules over us and has his foot on our neck right now. Keeps us in ghettos and keeps us in poverty. Okay? And keeps us oppressed. What if you couldn't live where you wanted to? Have you heard of redlining? Redlining is where, back in the 30s and 40s and 50s, leaders and bankers actually took a red pen around areas where people of color lived and wouldn't loan to them or minimize the services they would give them. And those people of color were not allowed to move into other areas. This is called redlining and it kept black families from being able to live in non-redlined areas. So the number one way that people build wealth in America is taken away from black families. The ability to have a house grow in value. It's estimated that the black community has lost trillions from redlining. Today, the average black family has 13% of the assets that a white family has. And almost all of that can be related to the value of their homes. I hired a pair of young white men and a pair of young black men. And for each pair, I randomly assigned one individual in the pair a criminal record. What this means is none of the young men in the study who were posing as job applicants actually had criminal records in real life. But for the purposes of these applications, they communicated to employers that they had a felony conviction. So looking first at the outcomes for white testers, we see that about 34% of whites with no criminal record received a callback or job offer compared to just 17% of whites with a criminal record. So we see that a criminal record reduces employment opportunities by about 50%. In the case of black testers, 14% of those with no criminal background received a callback or job offer relative to just 5% of blacks with a criminal record. When we compare the outcomes of the black and white testers side by side, what's most striking is the direct effect of race on the outcomes of these young men. A black applicant with no criminal background received callbacks or job offers at about half the rate as an equally qualified white applicant. But the most surprising finding was really related to blacks with no criminal background relative to whites with a felony conviction. We find that a white applicant with a felony conviction fared just as well, if not better, relative to a black applicant with a clean record. This suggests that being black in America today is essentially like having a felony conviction in terms of one's chances of finding employment. It says, because thou has had a perpetual hatred and has shed the blood of the children of Israel by the force of the sword in the time of their calamity, in the time that their iniquity had an end. Therefore, as I live, saith the Lord power, I will prepare thee unto blood and blood shall pursue thee. Sith, meaning since thou has not hated blood, even blood shall pursue thee. Because you've been a very bloodthirsty nation of people, especially when it comes to the children of Israel, which is you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. The so-called white man has been the main oppressor, the author of all mischief against the Hebrews, the Israelites. Okay? And the Lord is not going to allow this man to go unpunished. You know, you can't cop out and say, oh, that was my ancestors. Why should I get the blame? Because the scriptures cut all that. You are your ancestors back in the reincarnation. It's just you don't possess that understanding. Okay, somebody's got to pay for what your ancestors did. You know, balance has to be restored because the Lord is the God of balance. You understand, the Lord is about balance. He's about justice. And there's no justice if you ride off into the sunset with what you've done to not only us, but this planet Earth. Right. So now that we've uh, read that, basically, hopefully you understand that, you know, the so-called white man is never going to like the so-called black man. You've got a perpetual hatred, it says here. And you've shed a lot of our blood hanging us from trees, you know, lynching and and, and uh, castrating us and feeding us to alligators. And I mean, the list goes on, man. You know, the police gunning us down in the street, keeping us in the prison system, man, it just goes deep. You've got a perpetual hatred and that is the point, you know. So the Lord is getting ready to prepare you unto blood, 
okay? This is the book of Amos, chapter 1 and verse 11. It says, Thus saith the Lord, or Yahweh, the Lord in all caps is Yahweh. That's the name of the Heavenly Father, which means He exists in the Paleo Hebrew. Thus saith Yahweh, For three transgressions of Edom, which is the so called white man, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof. See, the Lord's not going to acquit the wicked. You know, the, the wicked is also the so-called white man, according to the Holy Bible. There's many names for this man in the Holy Bible, but you're not going to hear him referred to as a white man. Okay. It says, and for four, I will not turn away the punishment thereof, because he did pursue his brother with the sword. Okay. Which is Jacob, you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. It says, and did cast off all pity. You know, especially when they invaded America and wiped out the tribe of Gad, which is you so-called Native Americans. It says, and did cast off all pity and his anger did tear perpetually forever. He kept his wrath forever. Okay, it says, and he kept his wrath forever. Which lines up perfect with that other precept I read in Ezekiel 35 and 5. This man has a perpetual hatred and he's kept his wrath forever. This man has always hated us and he always will. This is the book of Obadiah chapter 1 and verse... I'm going to start at 9. I'm going to read through 10. Okay, because this whole book of Obadiah is dedicated to Esau Edom. And one thing you got to understand that Christians don't understand is that salvation is not for everybody. And it proves it. The Bible proves it because Esau is prophesied to be wiped off the earth. So how is salvation for everybody if Esau Edom is prophesied to go into extinction? That don't sound like salvation to me. Anyway. This is uh, Obadiah 1 and 9. And thy mighty men, O Teman, shall be dismayed to the end that every one of the mount of Esau may be cut off by slaughter. That's what's getting ready to happen to the so-called white man. The Lord's getting ready to cut them off by slaughter. The Lord said, I will prepare thee unto blood since you, since you love blood. You know, since you've not hated blood, the Lord is going to prepare you unto blood. It says, For thy violence against thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee, and thou shalt be cut off forever. Because their history is full of nothing but blood and violence, man, and robbery and deceit. And so-called black history is the history of us being in slavery and mistreated and killed, lynched and all that kind of stuff. What they try to do is call it critical race theory or CRT. And um, it's basically a way for them to try and hide their history because they're ashamed. They don't like you bringing up the past. That's why they say, oh, it was the past. Put it in the past. Get over it. But yet they won't think about getting over 9-11. You know what I mean? Or the so-called Holocaust. You know? These things they try to make you remember, but when it comes to the slaughter of the Native Americans and the so-called blacks and Hispanics, you know, then they, they want us to forget about that. But the point being that shame will cover you and it's covering you right now. We're living in a time where, you know, you don't like bringing up the past because it's shameful. You got a shameful history. OK, scriptures say shameful spewing will be upon your glory. You can't really enjoy the world like you want to because it was all got deceitfully. It was all got through ill-gotten gain and robbery and deceit and violence, man. You know? So it says, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. And that's what's going to happen after in the very near future. You know? Because right now you're witnessing the downfall of your society and then you're going to be cut off from the earth forever, meaning you're going into extinction. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit to verse 18. Right here. 
you know, there's a lot more meat on this, but for the sake of time, because I've got a lot of precepts I want to bring out, and this could be a lengthy lesson, I'm just going to read uh, verse 18. It says, And the house of Jacob shall be a fire, and the house of Joseph a flame. Okay, Jacob and Joseph, just think of it as the northern and southern kingdom. It says, In the house of Esau for stubble. So, basically, the house of Esau is going to be turned into stubble. Okay, you're going to be burned up. It says, And they shall kindle in them and devour them, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for Yahweh have spoken it, as meaning it's set in stone. There's nothing you can do to change prophecy. There's not going to be any remaining of the house of Esau. Esau is Jacob's brother, the so-called white man. So in other words, your punishment is going to be greater than you can bear. You're out of here. It's the book of Proverbs, chapter 10 and verse 30. It says, the righteous shall never be removed. Okay, and that's you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. You're the seed of the righteous. You're never going to be removed, meaning you're going to live forever. You know, it says, but the wicked, which is the so-called white man, pursuing to Malachi 1 and 4, uh, Job 9, 24, as well as other precepts, it says, the righteous shall never be removed, but the wicked shall not inhabit the earth you're getting ready to be cut off okay right now you inhabit the earth to inhabit means to occupy to rule over to run okay so the wicked shall not rule the earth in other words you're getting ready to come out of power and the lord is bringing you down right now you know your whole civilization is in shambles and you got the elites of your nation scrambling, trying to hold it together. And they know, according to prophecy, they can. This is why they built underground bunkers ready to escape the judge. Well, to try and escape the judgment that's coming for them. OK, because they know what's coming. This is the book of Job, chapter 27. I'm going to start at verse 13, read through 15. It says, this is the portion of a wicked man with the most high. And the heritage of oppressors, okay, the ones that have oppressed the whole world, basically, okay, especially right now in Israel and Palestine, because those Israelis are also Edomites, okay, they're the same people, they're just posing as the Israelites, they're pretending to be the biblical Israelites when they're really Edomites, and they're doing the same thing to the Palestinians that they've done to the whole world, especially so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans. Now they're getting a taste of what it's like to be next door neighbors with this devil. Let me read that again. This is the portion of a wicked man with the most high and the heritage of oppressors, which they shall receive of the Almighty. It says, if his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, and his offspring shall not be satisfied with bread. So the Lord is allowing your people to multiply and spread themselves throughout the earth to show his great power in the end when he destroys you because he's only allowing you to multiply for the sword. Okay, it's for the sword, meaning you're getting ready to be slaughtered. It says those that remain of him shall be buried in death and his widows shall not weep because there's only going to be a remnant of you after the Lord returns, because the Lord is going to return on a day that you destroy each other with the nuclear weapons that you've created, which shouldn't even exist, but it's just a representation of your wickedness in the earth. You know, you're a very destructive and bloodthirsty nation of people to develop such weapons as nuclear we nuclear missiles and stuff, man. That's just ridiculous, but, um, you know... You got to look at the manager, man. It says, those that remain of him shall be buried in death. So the remnant of you after you destroy each other with them nukes are going to go into slavery and then you're going to be buried in death. It says, and his widows shall not weep. Meaning your wives, your women, they ain't going to give a damn after you're gone. Wait till they see what we do to this earth, man. They're going to realize that you was just a, a dusty, low-life piece of shit. Okay, excuse my French, but hey, 
I'm saying it how it is. You really are the scum of the earth. And everybody knows it. Okay, so your widows are not going to weep. They're not going to care. They're going to cleave to the house of Jacob when they see who we really are. Because right now, the so-called black man that you see running around terrorizing this earth is a product of Esau Edom. But wait till we're ruling and we're, we establish righteousness in the earth because we naturally possess a righteous spirit within us. We're just a product of our environment right now. The environment that you've created, you so-called white people. You've, you've turned this earth into a damn ghetto. So how the hell do you think the poor of this ghetto are going to behave? You think they're going to be civilized people? Come on, man. But wait till we're ruling. Wait till you see who we really are. Because everybody knows we're the salt of the earth. We're the most dominant, the most talented, the most kind, the most strongest people on the planet. We're the salt of the earth, according to the Holy Bible, okay? And the whole world is about to see who we really are after the Lord returns. Especially when he puts us in those new bodies, your widows are not going to weep. They ain't going to give a damn about you, okay? Because you're going back to your cave-like nature, your because you came from the caves and you're going back into that caveman nature after the Lord returns and we put you in chains, okay? All right, this is the book of Job, chapter 21. And I'm going to start at verse 29 and read through 30. It says, Have ye not asked them that go by the way? And do ye not know their tokens? That the wicked is reserved for the day of destruction? See? If his children be multiplied, it is for the sword, the Bible said. Remember, I read that a few minutes ago. And it lines up perfectly with this. It says that the wicked is reserved, meaning that the Lord is allowing you to thrive and multiply. The wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. They shall be brought forth to the day of wrath. See? I might as well read 31. It says, who shall declare his way to his face? And that's where I come in. People like me. And there's many of us that teach the same gospel, that new song before the throne, which is here on earth. Okay, his footstool. Okay, it says, who shall declare his way to his face? And who shall repay him what he hath done? And the Lord is going to do that because the Lord is a God of justice. And you're not going to get away with what you've done. You have to be repaid. Balance has to be restored because the Lord says a false balance is an abomination. So the Lord ain't going to allow you to just get away with what you've done to this earth. You're just running this place into the ground. You're a damn madman that has to be stopped. So who is going to declare your way to your face and tell you about yourself? Everybody's so scared and wants to be politically correct or don't want to offend, man. you got to call a spade a spade. Someone needs to address the elephant in the room, man. Okay? And that's where I come in. Because I'm not holding back. I don't care what anybody says, man. This man needs to be told who he is and about what he's done to this earth, man. But they ain't gonna care. Edomites are so proud. They're the they're they're the wicked for a reason. You know, when you tell a so-called white man that he's an Edomite, you're going into slavery and this and that, you know, everything that the Bible says, they scoff. They think it's a joke. They think they'll never be taken out of power. But the scriptures say all this also. The scriptures say that it, it reveals the thought of the Edomite, the pride of Esau. That they think they'll never be taken out of power. But the Lord's got something coming for you. This is the book of Nahum chapter 1 and verse 3. It says, Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Meaning you're not going to be let off. Let off the hook. You're not going to get a slap on the wrist. You're going to drink the full cup of his wrath. Okay. And it says, Yahweh have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet because the earth is his footstool. So the point being that the Lord is slow to anger. You know, this is why you 
have gotten away with everything you've done because the Lord has got that great day where he's just going to let rip. He's got that day coming, man. You know? But you you people don't believe in the Bible. It's written right here in the Bible. But you people just don't believe the Bible, man. Meaning you don't believe in the truth. You don't believe in Yahweh Shai. You don't believe in the Son of the Most High. It says, And the Lord will not at all acquit the wicked. Okay? You're not getting off the hook. This is Romans 9 and 22. What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endureth with much long suffering, because the Lord is slow to anger, just like I read. It says, What if the Most High, willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endured with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction? We're all spirits walking around in vessels, a meat suit, if you will, this human body, okay? But the vessels of wrath that are fitted to destruction, that's the son of perdition, which is the so-called white man. They're the ones that were always predestined for destruction. You know, this is the bitter part of the Bible that most people can't handle. Therefore, the truth of the Holy Bible isn't for you. Which means salvation isn't for you if you can't receive this bitter pill to swallow. The angel said, eat the book and it will be sweet in your mouth, sweet like honey. And then when you swallow it, it will be bitter in your belly. And that's this truth. That's what this was, this, that certain scripture was talking about. Because a lot of people, they find out they're a Hebrew Israelite, they find out the Lord loves them and salvation is for them and that they're the the seed of the righteous that is predestined for salvation but then they're like oh well, what about the what the so-called white man and then they find out that he is the wicked and he's going to get destroyed and you know that it's just a tough pill for them to swallow as well as these edomites finding out that they're edomites and what their future holds that is a tough pill to swallow. It's bitter in your belly. Verse 23, it says, And that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, because the Lord is going to have mercy on Jacob and yet choose Israel. They're the vessels of mercy. Jacob, the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, the Lord is going to have mercy on us because right now his, his wrath is upon us which is why we're oppressed, which is why we're gunned down in the streets, which is why we're lynched, which is why we're packed in the prison system and in the ghettos, which is why all these things are happening, because we're under the curses, man, because of what we did in the ancient world, because what we did in the past, okay? That's why the Lord put us in slavery, because we've been punished, but he's going to have mercy on us and yet choose us. Because we're his chosen people and he's going to bring us back to him, which is happening through this gospel. It says, and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy, which he had aforetime prepared unto glory. So we were always prepared unto glory. Okay. Now, the thing is, a lot of people might say this ain't fair. That why... Why does the Lord do what he does? I might as well scroll up a bit because it answers all that right here. Hmm. It says in Romans 9 and 11, For the children being not yet born, talking about Jacob and Esau, okay, neither having done any good or evil, that the purpose of the Most High according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. See, so it don't matter. It ain't about what we did. It's about what the Lord has chosen is what he set up from the beginning. You know, you got two children, Jacob and Esau in the womb, and none of them have done any good or evil. But the Lord already had his elect chosen, regardless of, you know, what whether they did good or evil. It says here, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And that's what happened when Jacob and Esau were born. The Lord said that the elder, which was Esau, 
because he came out first, he shall serve the younger, meaning he's going into slavery under the Israelites. That's his destiny. Verse 13, it says, As it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So the Most High loves Jacob, which is you so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, and he hates Esau, which is a so-called white man. So a lot of people will say that ain't fair. Why did the Lord set it up that way? And that's just the way the Lord set it up. It says it here. It says, what shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? So is the Most High unrighteous for setting it up that way? It says, God forbid, meaning no, he's not unrighteous. It says, for he saith to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So the Lord will have mercy and compassion on whoever he wants. He can do what he wants. He's the most high. It says, so then it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of the most high that showeth mercy, which is the vessels of mercy is Jacob. Okay. It says, for the scripture saith, Unto Pharaoh, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. So the Lord raised up Pharaoh in ancient Egypt, the ones that had us in captivity, the Pharaoh that had us in captivity, <coughs> making bricks without straw. Okay. It says, the Lord raised him up for the same purpose, the same way he's raising up these Edomites and allowing them to multiply. Okay. Because... They're only multiplied for their destruction, just like he did with Pharaoh. He, this time mirrors that time because this is the second captivity and the second deliverance. No, the final captivity, but the second major deliverance. Okay, it says, even for the same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth, just like it was back then. When Pharaoh had us in captivity, the same thing is going to happen when the Lord destroys Esau, you know, the modern day Pharaoh. It says, therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will he harden of, which he hardened Esau's heart because they don't believe they're the Edomites for one. And they don't believe in the Bible when we teach them what the Bible really says. They'll say we're taking it out of context but there's no way you can debunk it. It says, Thou will say unto me, Why doth he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that repliest against the Most High? See, who are you to say that that ain't fair? You know what I mean? It says, Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Meaning, you know, you, you say that ain't fair. Why did you create me the wicked? You can't really say that to the Lord because the Lord can do what he wants. The, it says it here in verse 21. Hath not the potter power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? So you have two vessels that were made, right? Let's just say a vessel as in a vase, for instance, right? And you made one with precious stones and it's beautiful to behold. And you just want to sit it on the fireplace and you just want to look at it all day because it's just so beautiful. And then you make a, another one that's just ugly. And you're just like, I hate that vessel. And I'm going to destroy that vessel. And I don't ever want to see that vessel again. The potter can do that. Let me read 21 again. Have not the potter power over the clay, the most high, have power over the vessel of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor. See? And then it comes to the part where I read earlier. So Esau was always created to be destroyed in the end. Okay, he's going to destroy that vessel. So the point is made in that let me move on because there's plenty more I'm going to bring out that is going to prove to you that the so-called white man is going into extinction. This is the book of Proverbs chapter 11 and verse 21. It says, Though hand join in hand, 
the wicked shall not be unpunished, but the seed of the righteous shall be delivered. See, because it's about a particular seed line. You understand? So though we're living in a time where so-called white people aren't as evil as they have been in the past toward us, and there are a lot of so-called white people that are pretty cool, you know, they're, they're quite laid back or whatever. You know, they, uh, they'll have a laugh with us. You know, they do what they can do to try and uh, pl please the poor or try and help the poor, which is us. You know, his, his children shall seek to please the poor, the scriptures say. So a lot of our people think, you know, he's not so bad. He's not as bad as he once was. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, you know, I like, I like them. You know, they want to join hands with them. It says, though hand join in hand, you know, you want to be at peace with the so-called white man. It says, the wicked shall not be unpunished. So it don't matter how much you like your neighbor Billy or R Rob or whatever, you know, Zach. <laughs> it don't matter how much you like these dudes, okay? They're getting ready to be punished. It says, and the seed of the righteous shall be delivered, meaning salvation is for Israel. I'm going to just scroll up to verse 1. It says, A false balance is an abomination to Yahweh, but a just weight is his delight. So the Lord says a false balance is an abomination, meaning balance has to be restored. You can't get away with what you've done in this earth and ride off into the sunset. It don't work that way. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 35 and verse 33. It says, So ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So prepare for slaughter, Esau Edom, because you went to the Native Americans and shed a lot of blood. Millions, okay? It was a major holocaust, bigger than your so-called holocaust. But the only reason you teach your so-called holocaust in the school public school system is because those public school systems were set up by the Rothschilds, which is the chief house of, which is the elites of Esau Edom. So of course they're going to alter the school curriculum and history to make it look like they're the ones that have been oppressed but they're not going to speak about king leopold ii and what he did in congo and they're not going to speak about the holocaust that happened when it comes to the native americans you know they don't they don't emphasize that type of stuff but it's all good man because the lord remembers and the lord ain't gonna forget it you know so it says, so ye shall not pollute the land wherein ye are, for blood it defileth the land. So if you shed blood in a land, you conquer a land by bloodshed and violence, it defiles the land. Okay, and karma or balance has to be restored. It says, for blood it defileth the land, and the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein, but by the blood of him that shed it. So prepare for slaughter because of all the blood that you've shed in this world. Since you love blood, blood is going to pursue you. You're not going to get away with it, okay? The Lord is not going to forget. It says, Defile not therefore the land which ye shall inhabit, wherein I dwell. For I, Yahweh, dwell among the children of Israel. So the Lord dwells among the children of Israel because we have that godly spirit within us. You know, it's just a lot of you haven't tapped into it. Two thirds of the nation of Israel. You know, they, they want to remain wicked. They won't come back to their power. They won't come back to who they really are inside. Okay, they're always going to be niggers and they're going to have to be destroyed. But the Lord dwells among the children of Israel. This is Psalms 8, 9 and 14. Justice and judgment are the habitation of thy throne. 
Mercy and truth shall go before thy face. See, the Lord is about balance. He's about justice and judgment. They're the habitation of thy throne, of his throne. Okay, the Lord is a God of justice. Okay, uh, some call it karma. But the Lord is going to restore balance, man. This is the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be have already been. It says, and the Most High requireth that which is past. So the Lord ain't forgot about what you did in the past, and you're going to have to pay for that, in other words. He requires that which is past. you got to understand, like a day is like a thousand years to the Lord, and a thousand years is as a day. So... In all honesty, what you did was like it just happened a few hours ago. Like it just happened yesterday. If that. So the Lord ain't forgot. It's still fresh in his head. It might seem like it was in the past to you. But the Lord is going to require that which is past. And that's the point of this precept. Alright, this is the book of Psalms, chapter 109, I'm going to start at verse 13. It says, let his posterity be cut off, and in the generation following, let their name be blotted out. See, your name is getting ready to be blotted out from the earth, meaning the Edomites are not going to exist anymore. Eventually, you won't even find a fossil of these people. They're going to be a long thing of the past, almost like it was a brief moment. It says, let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with your heart. Well, see, the Lord ain't forgot about your past. He requires that which is past. He's remembered the things that you've done in this earth and he's not going to forget it. It says, let the iniquity of his fathers be remembered with your heart. So you're not getting away with what you did. Our Lord is going to fight for us because all this marching and protesting, Black Lives Matter and all that crap, that ain't doing nothing, man. Even if he was to give you reparations, what's that going to solve? That you're not, that's not going to bring about the justice that we deserve, okay? The Lord is our justice. He's going to bring our justice. It says... And let not the sin of his mother be blotted out. It says, Let them be before Yahweh continually, that he may cut off the memory of them from the earth. See? Extinction. It says, Because he remembered not to show mercy, but persecuted the poor and needy man, that he might even slay the broken in heart. Exclusive reporting shows that Navy Federal Credit Union has the widest disparity, the widest disparity in conventional mortgage approval rates between white and black borrowers of any major lender. This is the nation's largest credit union. It serves military members, defense personnel, veterans and their families. And CNN's Renee Marsh found that it rejected more than half its black conventional mortgage applicants last year. I was the CEO of my company, so I had a Pretty good income. Your credit was in the 700s. Mm -hmm. You had recently sold your house. Mm -hmm. You had $100,000 for the down payment, which was more than 20%. Correct. I mean, what more could you ask for? CNN reviewed Otandi's financial documents. He even had a pre-approval letter from Navy Federal in hand, but just two weeks before closing. They got a denial. They sent me a letter saying, we are sorry, but your application has been denied. The denial letter listed excessive obligations in relation to income as the reason. When they denied is when we came back and said, oh man, there's something else going on. And what did you think that something else was? A discrimination. But it wasn't just a tondi. Thousands of other black applicants were also rejected. According to a CNN analysis of federal consumer protection data, last year, Navy Federal Credit Union only approved 48 percent. That's less than half of its black applicants for conventional home mortgages. White borrowers were approved more than 75 percent of the time. It's the biggest gap among the top 50 lenders.
The data also shows Navy Federal was more than twice as likely to deny black mortgage applicants than white ones, even when different variables, including income, debt, property value, and down payment percentage, were the same. You know, you've been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews. Let me just quickly pull that up, man. This is Second Maccabees 7 and 31. It says, And thou that has been the author of all mischief against the Hebrews shall not escape the hands of the Most High. <laughs> You've been the pain in our ass since day one, man. And you always will be. You never will like us. You're always going to be racist as hell. You'll never change. You're always going to be that same old devil. There's no rehabilitating you. Okay, because you're the ungodly. You're the wicked, according to the Bible. Everything you do is evil. You're just the evil people, man. Look what you've done to the earth. It speaks for itself. You know what I mean? Like, this ain't just hate speech. This is the truth. If your history wasn't so wicked and evil, then we wouldn't have to say these things. But unfortunately, you got to call a spade a spade, man. All right, this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 14. I'm going to start at 21. It says, Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers. Buck breaking, alligator bait, lynch mobs, uh, boiling us in vats of sugar, boiling sugar. You know what I mean? All kinds of things you did to us, man. Un unnumerable. Unnumerable, man. It says, prepare slaughter for his children, okay, who are living today. You Edomites that are running around this earth right now talking about, that wasn't us, that was our forefathers. It says, prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise nor possess the land. So you don't gain power and you don't possess the earth, okay, because all you do is destroy it says, nor fill the face of the world with cities, these concrete jungles, man, these disgusting cities of yours. Okay. So the Lord is getting ready to slaughter his children who are here today. It says, for I will rise up against them, saith Yahweh of hosts, meaning the most high of armies, and cut off from Babylon, which is America, the name and remnant and son and nephew, your whole sea lion. In other words, okay, it didn't say daughter, <laughs> because the daughter, the women don't carry the seed, but all, every single male Edomite is getting ready to be destroyed, and your widows are not going to weep. I'm going to read that from the top again, verse 22, it says, For I will rise up against them, say if you hire of hosts, which is happening right now. It says, and cut off from Babylon the name and remnant and son and nephew, say if you hire, okay. Prepare for extinction. You know, after reading all this, I just want to say, you know, good riddance, man. And we ain't going to shed a damn tear, okay? As much as I, you know, there are some so-called white people that are acquaintances of mine and that they're not that bad, you know what I mean? But it, overall, you're the wicked. And for the greater good, you just have to go, Okay. There's no other way to bring peace in this earth. So if I have to if I have to say goodbye to Billy and Zach and Roger <laughs> okay, for example, you know, Edomite names. If I got to say goodbye to them, hey, so be it, man. Okay, for the greater good, hey, you all got to go. I don't care. Okay? I ain't going to shed a damn tear either because I'm thinking ahead. I'm thinking of what the world is going to be when you're laid down. Let's just grab that real quick, man. Because the thing is, the more these Edomites spread upon the earth, the more you're going to see wickedness increase. Let me grab that first. One second. All right. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 29 and verse 16. It says, when the wicked are multiplied, transgression increaseth. Transgression is sin. Iniquity, you know, wickedness, basically. It says, but the righteous shall see their fall. So the ones who the Lord is protecting and watching over in these end times, the ones that are calling on his name, 
okay, that strong tower, the ones that are under the protection of the Most High, the elect, in other words, the righteous, they're going to see the fall of this devil. So when thousands of dying are left and thousands that are right, hey, those plagues ain't going to come near us that are calling upon the true God of Israel and that are in the right spirit. Okay? The spirit of watching these and uh, anticipating the death of these devils, okay? That's a righteous spirit, regardless of what Christianity has taught you, man. Okay? And I can prove that also. Let's just go to that. This is the book of Revelation, chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 9. It says, If any man have an ear, let him hear. Meaning, if you have the ability to understand what this is saying, then this is for you to understand. It says, He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. So the ones that have led the world, not only the world, but the Israelites mainly, into captivity, are going into captivity. You're going into slavery. It says, He that killeth with the sword, which was Esau's blessing. Okay, Esau was blessed with the sword. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. It's the only way. It's the only way you're ever going to see peace in this earth is when these people are killed with the sword. It says, here is the patience and the faith of the saints. So this is what the saints, the ones that are in the right spirit, are patiently waiting for. A lot of you might think that's hate. No, we're just thinking with a sober mind you christians don't come down to earth you don't come down down to reality man you people are living in la la land okay this world is so far gone that the only way it's going to be fixed is by bloodshed and violence and the prophets of old were all about war and violence okay you know so you need to you need you people are softened down man you people ain't you know you ain't living in reality because the saints are patiently waiting for these people to be killed and to go into slavery, man. Okay? That's what the patience of the saints is, man. All right, I just want to further expound on Proverbs 29 and 16. It says, when the wicked are multiplied, so when these devils keep having babies and when they keep increasing in power, it says, when they're multiplied, it says transgression increaseth, meaning... The more Edomites increase in this earth, it says transgression, meaning wickedness increases. It says, but the righteous shall see their fall. Okay, so the only way you're ever going to see peace is when these people are taken off the earth. You've got to get to the root of the problem, man. It's the book of 1 Maccabees, chapter 1, and I'm going to start at verse 7. And this is talking about Alexander the Greek. Or Alexander the Great, should I say. So-called Great. Alexander the Freak. Okay, it says, So Alexander reigned 12 years and then died. You know, this man went around and shed so much blood in the earth that the whole earth was quiet before him. Okay, it says, Alexander reigned 12 years and then died, and his servants bear rule everyone in his place. Edomites. It says, and after his death, they all put crowns upon themselves, meaning these Edomites took positions of power. You know, people like the Rothschilds and all them, man. It says, so did their sons after them many years, okay, which today in the modern times, you got the Rothschilds and Rockefellers and DuPonts and Gettys and all them. They're the ones that have the crowns upon their head. It says, and evils were multiplied in the earth, so... The more these people multiply, the more evils are going to multiply, in other words, okay? That backs up the precept I just read. So hopefully you can understand that the only way the peace is ever going to come in this earth is when these people are taken out, man. They have to go into extinction. you got to remember, it only took one Edomite, Esau. When Jacob and Esau were born... Esau became a strong nation from one Edomite. It only took one Edomite. So therefore, every single Edomite has to die. Otherwise, this world is going back to this again. 
after the kingdom of heaven, if you allow one Edomite to thrive, that's it. It's going right back to this again. Because these people are deceptive and evil and they take advantage of people's kindness, man. They'll never know the way of righteousness. All right, these precepts I'm about to read is going to further prove that the only way peace is ever going to come in this earth is when these people are taken out. It's the only way. This is Isaiah 14, and we'll start at verse 5. It says, Yahweh have broken the staff of the wicked and the scepter of the rulers. Okay, so the Lord has broken the support of the wicked. They're begging all these other countries for a, for a handout now. Okay, because bricks has destroyed them, man. They're not stable anymore. The, the, a staff is what keeps an old man stable. The Lord has broken his staff. He's stumbling all over the place. And the scepter of the rulers, okay? In a nutshell, <clears throat> it means that he's broken the royalty of the rulers is the best way I can think off the top of my head. Meaning that they've been brought low. You know, they've been brought down, man. Everybody realizes they're the scum of the earth. It says, He who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger, is persecuted and none hindereth. None's helping this man now that he's stumbling all over the place, asking people for help, trying to join bricks. Now he wants to act like he wants to help the, the so-called Africans. You know what I mean? Like this, <laughs> all he's done is rule the nations in wrath with a continual stroke, man. It, you know, he wants more, more, more. He's whipping you, whipping you, whipping your back. You're making you work a nine to five until you're damn 60 something. And then wants to increase the age and increase the working hours and increase the time in school and uh, steal your children from a young age and indoctrinate them and... and just have you work, 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 man. No rest. So he who smote the people in wrath with a continual stroke, he that ruled the nations in anger is persecuted and none hindereth. And afterwards, because uh, this is where we're at right now, you're being persecuted and none's hindering, none hindereth. None's, no one's helping you. No one wants to help you. Who wants to help the so-called white man stay in power? We've had enough. Okay, well, it's time for a, a new age, which doesn't include you. It says afterwards, basically, this, this is jumping to afterwards. It says the whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth into singing. So when have you ever seen the whole world break forth into singing, man? The whole world is mourning right now. So once you're taken down, it says the whole earth is at rest and is quiet they break forth into singing. This is a future prophecy. It says, Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, meaning since you've been taken out of power, put under the Israelites' foot, it says, No feller is come up against us, and a feller is a lumberjack. So nobody's going to be cutting down all the trees, the lungs of the planet. Okay, which means people are going to live longer, People are going to have cleaner oxygen, no more chemtrails in the sky, no more poison in the water. This man is, oh, the, the world is getting ready to rest, man. And the whole world is going to break forth into singing. And this is what's going to happen when you're laid down. Let me read verse 8 again. Yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee. Obviously not literally, but you know everything is living. Everything is a living organism, man. Everything has life. So, in a nutshell, really, spiritually speaking, the trees are going to rejoice. The flowers are going to rejoice. The animals are going to rejoice. So, this is basically saying that nature is going to rejoice. It says, yeah, the fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, since thou art laid down, no feller has come up against us. See? See, you people have to go for the greater good, in other words, okay? It's the only way, man. All right, so this is the last precept I'm going to bring out to close this lesson out. I think this has been long enough, and hopefully you get the point. The Bible says what it says. There's no way around it. You can't twist scripture 
to make it say what you want it to say, because then you're saying that the Bible contradicts itself. If you're if you're trying to use scripture to come up against what I've just brought out. So Baruch 4 and 25, my children, which is the children of Israel, you so-called blacks, Latinos and Native Americans. It says, suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from the Most High. For thine enemy, which is a so-called white man, have persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. <laughs> and there you have it, man. You're going to be under our foot very soon, you so-called white people. You're out of here, man. We're going to have you in chains, okay? And that's a whole nother lesson I can prove without a shadow of a doubt that you're getting ready to go into slavery. I'm pretty sure you don't want to see that lesson. You know, I'm sure you can't handle much more than what you've just witnessed. But this is what the Bible really says. And you so-called white people are going into slavery and then you're going into extinction. You're out of here for the greater good. All right. Because this planet will not survive unless you're taken down. Okay. So Lord willing, you Israelites have been uh, edified regardless of what nation you look like. You know, if you can receive this and you're a so-called white man, hey, that's a good sign. If you can accept this and uh, you're not offended and you agree with the gospel, then that is a good sign. You could be an Israelite. But you better hope you're an Israelite. That's all I got to say, because Edomites, you're going into extinction, all right? So Lord willing, this has been edifying to you Israelites, and you Israelites scattered among the nations. And on that note, I'm going to close it out. Give all honor, praise, and glory to my heavenly father, Yahweh, in the name of his son, Yahweh Shai, in the name of the Holy Spirit, the Rukakwadash, right? Shalom, Yasha'Allah, Prince of the Power.